Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and I just finished Mother 1. This is a new series I've decided to do. Long story short, rather than having a complete comprehensive critique like I normally do with these videos, I'm going to do what I refer to as I just finished games. So, I'm gonna come from perspective rather than a hardcore critic nitpicking every little detail and providing you with the best information of whether or not you should buy it, and rather I'm gonna tell you how I personally as a gamer rather than a reviewer or critic feel about the game. That's what this series is going to be. They're going to be very short videos, I'm hoping, and they're not going to be full of a whole lot of uh, analysis, but rather they're going to be short little blurps of what I personally think of the game. And I'm hoping to put a hell of a lot more of my character into it, being that a little bit more silly, a whole hell of a lot less serious uh, than my normal videos. So that's what this is, expect more of them. Also, a lot of this is off the cuff, I'm not reading like from a script like I normally do. So if I flub from occasionally, that's where that's coming from. I'm gonna try to cut and edit it down so it's not as rambling, but this is what's happening, and uh, yeah. So anyway, I just finished Mother 1. I've been wanting to play the Earthbound series for a long time now. Actually, ever since I've finished a lot of uh, Earthboundian-inspired indie games, I felt it was my duty that eventually I needed to start out on the series. And what better place to start than at number one? And after playing number one, uh, it hasn't aged well, to be honest, guys. Um, I'm sure at the time when it came out, a theme no one has had before. RPGs in general have only been around for 10 years before Mother 1 came out. And I know the story behind Mother 1 was, instead of doing a typical RPG like the uh, Dragon Quest, I'm sorry, it was a lot of the inspiration going into it. But instead of doing like a typical Dragon Quest RPG, rather they wanted to make one that was in a western suburban country. I say western because of course Earthbound is a product of Nintendo, which is Japan. And a lot of that shows in this. It's like very colorful, very fun, even by today's standards. It's kind of a unique idea. You play as Ninten. His name's Ninten. And you know, I know the Earthbound game, Mother 2, by the way. Uh, but Mother 1, since it was never released in America, or in the Western world really, just stayed localized in Japan, it only fairly recently really got an English translation, which is the one I played through. Uh, but instead of it being called Mother 1 and then Earthbound being called Mother 2, a lot of people just refer to Mother 1 as Earthbound 0, and then Mother 3 as Earthbound 2. So it goes Mother, or Earthbound 0, Earthbound, Earthbound 2. I know, it's all very confusing. It made it hard for me to look up a walkthrough. Which brings me to the biggest gripe I have about it is, once again, it hasn't aged well. Uh, a lot of the RPG aspects to it uh, reminds me of some of the bad, like, grinding stuff you had to do in a lot of old RPGs. There were times in this game I had to grind for hours doing, like, Absolutely nothing. I'd have a YouTube video up in the corner just so I could grind and finish it out. Uh, I really wanted to complete it though because, you know, as I said before, I felt I owed it to the game since I played all these indie games that have been inspired by the series thus far. So this is an old game. It was made in 1989. And it shows. There's not a whole lot of the stuff we take for granted, and hell, we even consider it boring nowadays to do a typical turn-based uh, JRPG. All of the well-balancing that people have learned in the late, I don't know, 90s, early uh, 2000s that we had, like, uh, the late Final Fantasies and whatnot. None of that was understood yet. It was still very much experimental, and uh, it shows in Mother 1, <laughs> frankly. Uh, you'll find yourself grinding a shit ton before you have to go to a new area. Um, but... I knew the game was old to begin with, and I figured it was par for the course, so it didn't really bother me that much, but it's hard for me to actually recommend the game, being that, frankly, its theme is unique. It's really hard to recommend because of all the horrible-ass grinding you have to do. Um, the monsters are unique, though. In the very beginning, you'll fight things like, you know, crows, snakes, hippies, trucks, just anamorphized things, and in the very beginning, actually, you're attacked by a lampshade. It's never really explained. Uh, characters nonchalantly said, oh, it must have been a poltergeist. 
just like it's a typical everyday thing, I don't know, and you, uh, that's basically how the game starts, is a lamp attacks you and you save a bunch of families. And your mother goes, okay, it's time for you to use your psychic powers for good. I was like, oh, okay. Go to the basement and get your grandfather's stuff, and you get a book from your grandfather, you get a bat, and you go off in the world. Beating shit to death with a bat and using your psychic powers to, uh, destroy them. Yeah, that's, that's this game. And it does it in a very tongue-in-cheek and fun way. And actually, I had a hard time figuring out whether or not who the target audience for this game was. At times, I felt like it was supposed to be a small child. For instance, if you defeat a foe that's human, such as a hippie, you can beat him to death, and rather than saying you killed him, it'll say he turned back to normal. Or if you beat a squirrel to death or a snake to death, it'll say something along the lines of you tamed that thing. And typical baddies that you would cartoonishly consider bad, like zombies and whatnot, simply turn to dust. What's more, very annoyingly, your dad will randomly call you, like if you've been playing the game for too long, and go, Hey, uh, you've, uh, you've been playing this game a lot. Uh, you should, uh, you should take a break, and you have a chance to take a break. I, I felt like I was being talked down to in the game. So I felt like at the same time this was supposed to be for a very much younger audience and for the people playing in a Nintendo Entertainment System in the late 80s, they're probably on point by saying that it's a kid at the time. At the same time there were comments that I'm not sure were bad translations or just maybe cultural gaps between me between me as an American and the typical Japanese audience, but there were moments that I was like, ah, uh, that was a pretty mature subject right there. Um, one comment was in the town, for instance, on a random town, I can't remember if it was reindeer or whatever, but, uh, stopped and said, yeah, so-and-so's thinking about building a strip club. I don't think it's very appropriate. And I'm like, uh, that seems off kilter a bit. Um... Ultimately, I, I think it, I'm just overlooking it, and I think it was aimed at kids, and it was supposed to be a throwaway moment. Hell, I played worse when I was younger. But it, the tone felt weird to me, and it had that off settling feeling that you often hear about with the Earthbound, with the creepy, toppled on childish innocence, especially at the very end, where I couldn't help but uh, recognize how much the final boss looked like a testicle. Spoiler alert, I'm about to show the image right here. And I, I couldn't unsee that it looks like a fucking testicle. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if that's just a design choice or what, but moving on. Yeah, so you start this game, like I said before, and your mom said, Hey, yeah, uh, you need to use your psychic powers to go save the world now. And you go down and you find uh, the main town because you live in like the rural suburbs area. You go walk into town and you find out, no, oh, there's zombies taking over. We're gonna send this one child over and you have a mare that- It was actually kind of funny. Uh, I'm sure it was hilarious by those uh, late 80s standards, but yeah, it was- uh, The mare was like, yeah, I, I, I need you to go do that. And I'm like, you're sending a small child out to go? To go take care of this problem? It's kind of- it's kind of funny. But yeah, you go zombie area and you take care of them. And then from there it gets real fucking confusing. Try to keep this as spoiler free as I can. There's not a whole lot I can say. Um, honestly, spoiling the game's hard, except for the last few minutes. But, in short, uh, you wind up finding a rock and being teleported to a weird-ass place uh, in the sky. And it takes a turn from there, and the game goes from being very uh, controlled, it feels like, very linear, to just kind of like, Do whatever! I don't give a shit! You end up wandering around a massive world, and frankly, if you're me, you're trying to find party members as quickly as possible. But yeah, you end up getting a couple of different party members, and uh, that was another thing I noticed was uh, how boring my party members were. <laughs> the only one I really enjoyed, ironically, was Lloyd, who got painted as a complete coward. You find him beaten up in a trash can, basically. Um, but the entire thing, he was like, oh, I'm a coward, I'm a coward, but literally Lloyd was he's a better fighter than my healer character. My healer character, or really psychic character, she only got powerful late game. I had her guarding her ass the entire time because she couldn't take a hit. She had like a quarter of the health everyone else had, and the AI would always focus her. Which brings me, and I, uh, which brings me to the end. Now, I pulled my fucking hair out at the tail end of this game. 
you have to grind so damn much. I was watching YouTube videos in the corner while I grinded all these overpowered characters, and I grinded them up like four or five levels. By the end of it, the main character of Ninten was level 50, Mary, the psychic, was 40, and Lloyd was 43, and even then, when I had to climb up the Long Ass Mountain, it was basically like an onslaught stretch of overpowered characters. There'd be times where you encountered someone that would just put half your party to sleep and you couldn't fucking do anything. You just watched them get the tar beat out of them, you couldn't run away, you didn't have any way to wake them up. It was very frustrating and frankly unfair. Once again, it's par for the course for I think an old turn-based RPG, but still. It sucked. It wasn't a pleasant experience for someone that's just now playing them in 2016. That being said, once it was all said and done and I got the leftovers of the story, I'm glad I played it. Why do you ask? It was unique enough, it was interesting enough, and frankly I always found grinding in RPGs pretty therapeutic. I can watch something in the corner, it's not that big of a deal. And it's unique enough that I understand why people enjoy this series. Now, don't get me wrong, I recognize that they like Earthbound, and I will get to Mother 2, Earthbound, when I get a chance, but I figured if I was gonna play Mother 1, I should play it first since it is sequential, and very clearly they leave it open in Mother 1 for a part 2. And I'm interested to see what that is. Going into it and understanding that it is an old RPG that doesn't have all the knowledge that we game developers that we that game developers have today on how to make a good proper turn-based RPG and is engaging, I think it did a pretty damn good job. I enjoyed myself. And there are parts in this that I'm glad I played. I won't ruin much, but the game seems pretty cut and dry for a lot of it, and not have a lot of sequences, but it'll surprise you towards the last 10 minutes of the- or 10% of the game. It turns out to have a better story than I thought it was going to have. Alright guys, that's just about it. That's my, uh, my thoughts after just finishing Mother 1. Um, Comment down below what you thought about Mother 1, and uh, whether or not what parts of it you hated, what parts of it you liked, what you thought it did well, what you thought it did bad. Comment if you agree with me, comment if you don't. Keep in mind, this video uh, shouldn't be a flagship for what the rest of my videos are. Many of my other videos are very analytical review videos about indie games, but I thought if I was going to do a triple A or even really a cult classic game, I owed it this much to talk about it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm enjoying this. I think I'll do more of these in the future. Do not expect them on a regular basis. Yeah, I've been Larson the Wolf. This was Mother One. I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like Mother, you may like a couple of these indie games I've reviewed in the past. I have Lisa here in the corner. It's a very popular one. It's a bit dark, but it still kind of has that earthbound look and a earthbound feel kind of to the story, but it's far darker. And then we have Suits, which is kind of an earthbound again. Uh, it definitely has the awful grungered and RPG mechanics that Mother 1 does, but uh, yeah, it's an interesting click nonetheless. What's more, I recently did a collab with the Henry Game Show over Cave Story. Cave Story is like a Metrovania game that's, uh, well I guess it's freeware now, but it's a cult classic Metrovania game. With a very unique art style, good soundtrack. You should go over to the Henry Game Show and check that out, he'd love to have you. The intro's a bit rough, but after that it's a really good video. Rick always does a really good job with editing. You should go over there. Alright, thanks again for watching. Later.